So I was going to go to bed because it says right down here it's 2.06 a.m. That is actually the time. And for me at least. And I saw this new info come out from Intel and NVIDIA. And this just shows me how much pressure AMD is putting on both of these companies. NVIDIA, I think, is in a pretty good spot. Like, they probably don't need to do what they're doing, supposedly. These are leaks. These are rumors. So, again, don't say I'm saying this is gospel. It's not. But if these are true, I don't understand what either company is doing. Like, I understand why they're doing it. But at the same time... I just think it's not worth it. It doesn't make any sense from a logical perspective why they would do something like this, especially Intel. NVIDIA, I can kind of understand because I'll explain it. So Intel preps dual core i3-7360X for X299 and even video cards is saying, but why? Now, Intel... He said it's not done with KB Lake X yet. A prototype of i3 dual core processor uh, has been spotted in China on Badu. That's the source. Baidu. I don't know how to say it. Um, so yeah, basically it's a 7350K with 100 megahertz overclock. That's it. And a higher TDP. In other words, if you buy this, you're getting a more expensive 7350K. Now, the first argument that people will bring up is that because it's on the HEDT platform, you can buy this cheap chip, use it in your computer, and then upgrade maybe in a year when, you know, the next generation's out for extreme core processors and upgrade to something like a 7900X, or hopefully if it uses the same uh, socket, you can upgrade to an eighth generation CPU. Now, while I think that that's a reasonable and sound argument, I just think it doesn't make any sense to buy a 7350K at all. Oh, sorry, not a 7350K, a 7360X. Jeez, I'm already getting mixed up because they're basically the same chip. You might as well just buy a 7350K because the type of person who's going to buy this chip is not the type of person who has money to burn at all. If you have money to burn in a year, you're going to have money to burn now. And when you look at the alternative, which is the 7350K, it's on a cheaper platform, which is the Z270 or Z170 platform. And it's only 1.25% slower, supposedly, than the 7360X. So it's on a cheap platform, the 7350K. It's pretty much the same performance. And the 8350K is just around the corner, which will have four cores and four threads and be overclockable as well. Now, it'll use a different motherboard socket, but at least you're getting four cores and four threads. This is still a dual core with hyperthreading, but I mean, I still don't think that that's a good enough reason to buy this. Four core, four thread is always going to beat a two core, four thread, hands down, any day. And uh, people are posting memes, like get some help. Um, but yeah, it just makes absolutely no sense to do this. If you're going to buy the HEDT platform, just go all out on it, or at least maybe buy something that's decent, like an eight core processor, like the one below the 7900X. This just makes no sense. To me, the reason why Intel is doing this is because they're panicking. They have these wafers or these chips from the wafer laying around. And they're just trying to sell it at a higher margin. And if you're buying this chip, you're an idiot. A hundred percent. Just like the 7640X and the 7740X, which are very similar to the 7700K and the 7600K. Um, this is just basically a rebrand on a different motherboard. Now, the other big problem with this is that Intel, even though they're using the same socket with the 8350K, you can't use a 7350K on a Z370 motherboard and you can't use an 8350K on a Z270 motherboard. So even though they're the same socket, they're not compatible with each other. Now, this very well may happen with this socket too. The Skylake X, KB Lake X socket. They may do the same shit with the next generation of Intel Core Extreme processors. So if you bought this chip and you want to upgrade, your highest upgrade path then, if it doesn't use the same socket for the next gen, would be the 7980XE, which is a very fast chip. It's huge, but I don't particularly think that that's a smart idea at all. If you're going to build a budget build, you're going to build a budget build. You're not going to build 
something that costs more and has a more expensive motherboard. Not to mention that you don't even get the full benefits of that platform. So if you bought this 7360X, you can't use the quad channel memory in it. You can't essentially use all the PCIe lanes. So it makes no sense. So this whole story, if it's true, is ridiculous and stupid. And Intel is ripping you off if you buy it. Honestly, please do not buy this chip. Intel is trying to make as much money as they can off you as possible. And they're using the promise of the next generation or this generation's HEDT processors as an upgrade path. But as we've seen with the 8000 series, you can't trust Intel at this point to keep even the same socket as a backward compatible socket or even a forward compatible socket. It's ridiculous. Anyway, now we're moving on to this next one, which is possible specifications of the GTX 1070 Ti Emerge. This is according to my drivers, um, which is sourced here by video cards. And uh, yeah, basically it's a GTX 1080 with 128 less CUDA cores and it has the same base clock, almost the same boost clock. Even with GPU boost, it'll be the same. If it overclocks, it'll also overclock around 2000 to 2100 megahertz, like every other chip that's happened in Pascal, that'll be the case. The difference is the memory clock. You're using normal eight gigabyte GDDR5 versus the 11 gigabytes or gigabits per second, eight gigabytes of G5X on the 1080. So. That's the big disadvantage that this chip has. They have the exact same TDP, all three of these chips, even the 1070 has the same TDP. The reason why I think that this is an absolutely stupid idea is because even though the 1070 gets beaten by Vega 56, the 1070 has such low power draw that it makes absolutely no sense to do a 1070 Ti chip. Maybe if it had like 2,300 CUDA cores, you could kind of say that there's a reason for this, but at 2,400, there's basically no difference then. They'll be within like one FPS of each other at the same memory speed. The memory speed will make a big difference, but what you gotta also remember is, is that the 1070 is incredibly good at mining. It's, it's a really good mining chip for the money, and it's, it's had some inflation because of the mining boom. The 1070 Ti, because it uses normal G5 memory, GDDR5, it's also going to have some problems when it comes to mining because a 1080 has really good mining performance when G5X isn't a problem for the type of mining algorithm that you're using. So now you've got a chip that's as powerful as the 1080 but uses normal G5 memory. Hmm. Interesting, at least on compute, FP32 compute, it's pretty much exactly the same. So this might actually backfire on anyone who wants to buy this chip. It might actually be out of stock just purely because mining. Now it's good for Nvidia because they'll make even more money off a higher price or not Nvidia, but retailers. Retailers will make even more money off a uh, lower margin chip essentially and make it into a higher margin chip. But this just makes absolutely no sense. Now it says no date was given, but the rumor has it that it could launch around Halloween. The same site claims that the 1070 Ti could only cost 500 yuans, which is Chinese money, less than the GTX 1080, and video cards has kind of made that uh, calculated to 75 USD. So essentially you're getting a 1080, just a little bit gimped, a little bit gimped. Now. I did a video on if you had something like a GTX 1080 running at 11 gigabits per second versus uh, 10 gigabits per second, which was the old 1080, the first one that came out. And the memory speed, it made a little bit of a difference at 4K, but at 1080p, the difference was so minute. I think it was like two or 3%, maybe even one. So if you're looking at eight gigabits, yeah, there'll probably be a difference, but I wouldn't put it more than 10%. Now, what I preferably would have preferred is if they just reduced the price of both the 1070 and the 1080, especially the 1080, 
because the 1080 would then be fulfilling a market segment between 56 and 64, Vega 56 and Vega 64, because essentially the GTX 1080 competes with both of them. If you want to buy a Vega 56, you buy it because it's cheaper than the GTX 1080. Right, that's the whole reason why you're buying it because when you undervolt it or overclock it, you're using pretty much the same performance as the GTX 1080, or you're getting rather. And Vega 64, the it matches or beats the GTX 1080, but it just has too high a power draw and too high of a price to really be a competitive option, I would say. And with 56 being able to overclock, it kind of is like the 56 and the 1080 are the alternatives to the 64. So most people aren't even really considering Vega 64 at all at this point, um, especially with Vega 56 uh, AIB cards on the way. So essentially, if they just reduce the price of both the 1070, even though the 1070 will still probably be snatched up by miners, the 1080 will be the real winning chip because it's not as a big problem for miners. And on top of that, it's as fast as the 1070 Ti would be, if not faster in gaming. And let's be honest, the 1080, as Adored TV has said, and it's pretty well proven at this point, is a mid-range chip. It's a mid-range chip. So it seems to me like they're still trying to sell a mid-range chip at a higher margin level. And it's the same thing here. And they're trying to get even more margins out of this chip, the 1070 Ti chip, and by putting in um, the G5 memory as opposed to the G5X. So overall, this is just stupid. I don't really understand it. Like, I do understand it. It's all got to do with margins for both Intel and for NVIDIA, but this just makes no sense. And I said, what the fuck is the point of this card in the comments section? It's a GTX 1080, basically. Why not just reduce the point of, uh, not the point, the price of both the 1080 and the 1070? And that's still the position that I have. This makes absolutely no sense. Stupid idea. It'll be within 10, maybe even less percent in games of the 1080. And at 75 USD, it's not like you're saving a huge amount of money. I mean, if you're going to go all the way to almost within $100 of a 1080, you might as well just get the 1080 at that point. Or... You could just skimp and get the 1070 Ti. But I still think reducing the price of the 1080 would have been a better idea and the 1070. And you basically would have just destroyed Vega 56. Because Vega 56 still uses more power than the 1080 would. Or it'll be equivalent. And the 1080, in most games, at least in the older titles, does better than Vega 56 would. Like in something like GTA 5. Um, but in the newer titles, Vega 56 would probably beat it, if not match it. So, yeah, anyway, <laughs> this makes me really angry. But again, these are rumors, so don't take them too seriously. But it's just annoying to see that this is what both of these companies are doing. They're trying to take people for a ride, and I think it's stupid. And honestly, I think we need to just be level-headed here as a community and not buy these products. Of course, there will always be normies out there who want to buy these products, um, but it just, it makes no sense from an enthusiast standpoint to consider either of these, either of these, because to me, the G5X memory is going to do a lot better over the years than the G5 would. And I mean, you're getting pretty much the same performance anyway, and it's not that much more expensive. So up to you. Anyway, I've been Karma. Thanks for watching like comment and subscribe. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. I personally think both of these companies are just milking the shit out of people, but maybe I'm wrong and I'll catch you guys in the next video.